My name is Matt Schrack. I am one of our simulation product specialists and application engineers. Um, I am located in the also very blustery uh, Denver office. Um, so today our topic is about uh, simulation and how we can use simulation to drive our designs and not only drive our designs, but really optimize them. So there's a few ways that we can leverage the FEA technology that's built into SOLIDWORKS to not only make our designs better, but make them the best that they can be. So just a little bit of an agenda while we're getting started here. Um, I want to start off by talking about the packaging, you know, what comes with these different simulation levels. Um, and then we're going to go through a demonstration of what kinds of optimizations you can do with, you know, just your SOLIDWORKS premium license, your CAD premium license. And then we'll start getting into the, the simulation licenses in earnest um with the simulation standard professional and then i have a few little extras and tidbits i like to cover at the end um that will that are just kind of fun little tidbits so uh without further ado here is how our simulation products are um licensed uh at least inside of solidworks we offer some other products outside of the solidworks portfolio but um we're mostly going to be focusing on everything on the left here so just like the SOLIDWORKS CAD licenses, we have the three flavors, right? Simulation standard, professional, and premium. Um, you also have some simulation capability built into SOLIDWORKS CAD premium, as I'd mentioned earlier. And you can see that's indicated by the red outline here. So basic linear statics on parts and assemblies um, is really what you get out of the, um, out of the SOLIDWORKS premium. So um, what we're gonna do is we're gonna take this and we're just kind of step our way up through the products and talk about optimization that way. So I really like cars. Um, wish I had more time to kind of work on project cars and things like that. But I have a, a lot of respect for people who who work in the automotive industry or even just hobbyists, you know, to make the best performance uh, you can out of any kind of car. So on that note, I wanted to do something a little bit automotive. So we have this, this bracket here and uh, we wanna optimize this bracket. So everything when it comes to making fast cars, you wanna have the lowest weight possible with the maximum performance, right? And even down to the, the, the hood brackets, you wanna do this on every component that you can. So we're gonna be taking a look at this and how we can optimize this design um, using simulation. So in SOLIDWORKS Premium, our first kind of uh, design optimization option is just what we call the design insight plot. And this just gives us a little bit of very simple, easy to use uh, insight into uh, like the load paths in our design, critical areas, that type of thing. So I'll just go ahead and hop into SOLIDWORKS here and we'll take a look at, at how that's done. So this is the rocker bracket that we're gonna be looking at here. And Essentially, the way it works is we're going to have it kind of fixed with some bearings in the back and then a force in the front. And we want to try to see if we can remove any material from this at all. So inside of SOLIDWORKS, for those of you guys who might not have seen the simulation before, um, it's just an add in, just like all of our other fantastic ancillary products. Um, and then you can just click new study right here. And just like that, we're in simulation. We don't have to do any exporting, importing, nothing like that. All of our work is going to be done on the native CAD geometry. Um, so when I do a simulation, and I've been doing this for years and years now, I just work my way down the tree. That way I'm not having an oopsie moment and forgetting things. Um, you know, it's just a nice, nice way to have a good methodology to it. So I start off with the material. We're just going to have this as a kind of the generic SOLIDWORKS uh, steel that's in here. Um, the connections folder is more built for uh, if you have assemblies and other parts in your analysis to define how they're connected and how they contact each other. Since we're just doing this single part for now, we'll go ahead and skip that. Um, as far as fixtures go, we're going to add a few bearing fixtures onto this. Um, there's some bolts and, and shafts that go through these holes here. So we'll just go ahead and, and simulate those with bearing fixtures here and here. In order to keep this thing from moving axially, um, in these cylinders, I'm just going to add what's called a fixed hinge um, just to this face down here. That'll just prevent any axial movement along our bearings. 
All right. Uh, next, we can add in our loads. The load in this case is pretty simple. It's just a basic force load applied to this cylindrical face. Um, I want it to all be going one direction. So I will use our selected direction here, grab a plane that's just normal to that load and enter the magnitude here. All right. So setups, especially for single parts, um, I'm sure many, many of you guys have seen this. Uh, SolidWorks simulation setups are, are really simple and straightforward. Um, they're meant to get in the hands of you guys, the designers, right? Uh, so from here, we could go ahead and run this study. So I'm just gonna go ahead and create a mesh. Oops, fat fingers here. Let's try that again. Create a mesh, just do a quick check, make sure that we don't have any terrible looking elements, got enough elements through the thickness, everything looks pretty good. We can go ahead and run this study. Should take just a second for something of this size. Um, so by default, SOLIDWORKS has a large deformation scale for most of its simulation models. So uh, this deformation is exaggerated by over almost 700 times. Um, so it's definitely not gonna move that much because that wouldn't be a very good uh, hood latch mechanism if it did. Uh, but from here we can get information about the stress in the model. So we're sitting at a give or take 20 megapascals here, um, which may sound like a lot. I'm one of the freaks who does like the SI units. Um, but if you compare it to the yield strength, uh, that's over 600 megapascals. So we're nowhere even within a realm of possibility of this thing yielding, right? We're not even in the same factor of magnitude. So it's not going to fail due to stress, but Stress isn't our only design concern here. I wanna make sure that even if it's not gonna break, that it doesn't deflect too much as this thing is um, being loaded. We don't want the hood kind of sagging. Um, so we look, take a look at our displacements. They're a couple hundredths of a millimeter. So probably something, not even something that you could see with the naked eye. So whenever you're doing a, an optimization, you wanna start off with these baseline studies. You wanna know, okay, well, what, can this handle as is before you go and start cutting bits out of it, right? So uh, we'll go ahead and start the design insight plot here. So it's just a button up on the simulation tree. Like I said, it comes with every level of SOLIDWORKS simulation, um, save for the simulation express tool. Um, but that's really more of just kind of a tease anyway. Um, the design insight plot gives you uh, a lot of power actually, even for kind of entry level simulation stuff, being able to see how the load path propagates through the model. So there's a typo here, it says most loaded on the left, but that's actually least loaded. Um, and as you drag it through, you can see how the load path um, propagates through the model. So we can tell from this that we really only need material on the top and bottom of this. Um, most of this isn't even loaded until the very end. So because we're in SOLIDWORKS, we can just go through and let's make a couple cuts, right? We'll just use our familiar CAD tools. I'll, you guys are all gonna hate me because I'm not gonna define any of these sketches, but you know, just kind of really nilly cutting out some areas that look like we could remove material from them, right? Maybe we'll fill it some of these edges too, you know, maybe something like this, just to make it look nice. Yeah, we'll stick with that. That looks pretty good. And we can just cut this out of the model. Um, make sure it's going both ways. And voila, we have something like that. The beauty of the simulation in SOLIDWORKS is I don't have to alter my setup or reset anything up at all. Um, those of you guys who might've used third-party simulation programs, this type of workflow involves an export and a re-import and a setting up of the model and everything else. And it can be a real pain. But because we're doing this all inside of SOLIDWORKS, all I have to do is click run again, and we can get some valuable um, design data directly out of this. All right. So that's the design insight plot. It's really awesome for just really quick iterations. Hey, I need to figure out where I can remove material from, and then using your existing CAD, uh, CAD functionality, you can go ahead and use this to help optimize your design in a manual fashion. So moving up the, the chain, so to speak, of products, we can jump into simulation standard. And that gets you the trend tracker. So the trend tracker is a way to basically do what we just did, um, but it keeps track of your iterations as you go through. 
Um, on a simple part like mine, it's pretty obvious to tell where I could remove material from, but oftentimes when you're doing this sort of manual optimization, it's not so obvious and you might make a mistake and the trend tracker will help you catch those mistakes um, and kind of maybe revert back to something that was a little um, more desirable. So in order to do this, first thing I'm gonna do, I'm just gonna delete this feature. We'll keep the sketch for it. Similar to what we did with the design insight plot, you wanna start with a, a baseline that is um, kind of the maximum material condition, you know, if you will, for those GD and T guys out there. So I'm just gonna delete that cut and we're gonna just run this with a baseline study. To turn on the trend tracker, you just right click the study's name and then trend tracker is three or four down. You can see now it's in our tree here and we're granted a little Word, Microsoft Word icon with the trend journal. So we'll go ahead and run this baseline study. Uh, the results should be identical to the first study that we ran just a few minutes ago. It's gonna ask us if we wanna add trend tracker iteration. We'll click yes, and it'll save our model. Um, like I said, these, uh, these results should be basically identical. And we can double click the trend journal here and see what we're getting out of that. So it gives you the file name, study name, when you ran it, this is the baseline study, the first one that we've done. And we're tracking mass, stress, and displacement, which when you're doing optimizations, um, generally these are the big three you're concerned about anyway. Um, since this is the baseline, they all have the 100 for the normalized value. But the really cool thing is now we can go ahead and start making these changes. So I'll go ahead and, um, Let's just remake that cut that I did a few minutes ago. So I'll just reuse that sketch. All right, um, grab that. Cool, we'll just remake that cut. You're not gonna see it. I have to regenerate the graphics from the simulation, but it did cut through. We just have to click run this study again and you'll see it update accordingly. Yes, we wanna update the trend tracker, okay. Again, these are gonna be basically identical to what we did with just the design insight plot, right? We've about doubled our stress and displacement is probably relatively similar. But now if we look at the trend journal, just reopening that over here, we keep our baseline and it has another iteration, right? Iteration two, and it's tracking the same mass, displacement, stress, all of that fun stuff. Um, in addition to giving us nice graphs. So, by making that giant cut out of it, we reduce the mass by about 10 grams. You know, that's a decent percentage in a 60 gram part. Uh, we can take a look at the stress here. You're never gonna reduce stress by removing mass. So we expected the stress to go up um, and it did, but we're still well within the range of what this material could handle. Um, displacement's very similar, right? You're never gonna reduce displacement by reducing material. So um, that kind of shot up, but maybe this displacement's a little bit too much. Right, maybe I want to um, stiffen this model a little bit while still having a decent amount of mass removed. That's no problem. Again, we can just go directly into our familiar CAD features and I'm gonna make some sketches that aren't fully defined again. So be aware to be prepared to cringe here, but that's okay. You know, maybe we'll make a rib here. Uh, maybe we'll make one similar, kind of going the opposite way over here, All right? Maybe something like that. And then we'll just uh, extrude this up to kind of the back surface of it here. Yeah, something like that, probably be pretty nice. So going back into our simulation, again, we, <laughs> we can just go ahead and run the study. And again, It'll, the trend tracker will keep track of all of this for us. And we can go back into our um, plots here. So we increased mass, to, mass, excuse me, a little bit by adding those ribs in there, um, but really not all that much in the grand scheme of things. Um, but just by adding those ribs, we were able to reduce the, the stress back down to basically the same level where it was at with, uh, with the, the full piece. Same with the displacement, right? We were able to bring that back down. It's just the cost of a few grams of extra material, right? And we could continue with this sort of CAD iterative process um, where we're adding material, taking away material, 
everyone's familiar with how SolidWorks works, you know, and we can keep this trend journal going as long as we want to until we come up with something that we're pretty happy with. Right. So that is the capability that um, that simulation standard adds in. Right. So I'm just going to go ahead and roll these back here and uh, let me just rehide this. So let me jump back into my PowerPoint here. So that's the trend tracker. You know, it's just a, it's basically what we did with the, the design insight plot, but it keeps track of everything for you. Um, and it, it sure beats the heck out, out of taking screenshots and writing things down manually. So now we'll move up to simulation professional. And this is where, really where optimization inside of SOLIDWORKS shines. Uh, we have a few different packages in simulation professional that will do optimization. So the main one that most people have probably heard this buzzword going around is topology study. Um, I'm a huge fan of these. My background uh, before I was a sim guy was uh, doing a lot of additive manufacturing stuff with our Stratasys machines. So um, I really love the fact that I can kind of marry both of my lives, quote unquote, here at CATI, um, you know, with this type of simulation and additive geared stuff. So let me show you guys how the topology studies work. And we'll talk a little bit about um, what they're good for. So um, I'm just going to go ahead and copy this study over. So this is the same thing we've been using the whole time. We'll just copy it over. Again, you want to start with a, a full body, right? We don't want to start with something we've already started optimizing. Nice thing about SOLIDWORKS SIM is I can just switch it to a new study type directly from here. And maybe we'll call this topology demo. And it'll carry all of our loads and fixtures and everything we've done so far over, so we don't have to rework it. Topology studies take a little bit of extra input. So we'll start off with our goals. Generally, when I'm trying to optimize a shape, I will start with the best stiffness to weight ratio. It's kind of the default. Um, and what this allows you to do is say, hey, I want you to FEA this a bunch and come up with the best design for me. I want to reduce the mass, let's say on this one, by 70%. So you can enter a specific percentage here. You could also enter an absolute value of mass. You know, it really depends on, on what you're looking to do. So let's make this 70% lighter, or as close as you can get to 70% lighter, right? Um, but I also want to make sure that I'm monitoring our displacement. So you can add extra constraints on top of this. So here I'm saying make this 70% lighter, but I don't want my displacement to get more than 20% higher than the baseline, right? 1.2 times, or I guess that'd be 120%. Uh, but our displacement was only a few hundredths of a millimeter, right? Um, so don't let my displacement get any higher than that, but reduce the mass by 70%, all right? So if I were just to click go now, it would remove material from wherever it needed to. Um, by default, it does keep any faces where you have loads and fixtures applied, um, but only the elements adjacent to those faces. So what we want to do is maybe add a little bit more of a protected area around some of these faces. So we're going to do that through what's called manufacturing controls. And these are ways that I call, um, quote unquote, tuning your topology analysis. We know that we want to keep these faces, or they're going to have bearings and press fits in them. So we want to keep these faces uh, pretty thick. We don't want anything pressing through or hurting it. Um, so we can add a preserved depth. You can see it outlined here in the purple. So I'm saying preserve at least this deep into the mesh along these faces. Right. Um, and on the back side of this model, we have a face right here that is going to brush up against another body, right? We need that contacting surface. I don't want topology studies to pull that away. So we can say, hey, keep this face as well. Go ahead and accept that. So that'll preserve um, our fixtures at least. Uh, next manufacturing control we're going to add is what's called a demold direction. So whenever you're dealing with computer optimizations, um, we've all seen the wacky organic geometry that, that uh, computers can make. You want to at least be able to manufacture this uh, in some way, shape, or form. So I like to add a demold direction. Usually prevents overhangs um, and things that would be harder to manufacture, maybe out of an um, investment cast or a sand cast or something like that. 
So we're saying if we were to mold this, I want it to be manufacturable left to right. All right, and there's other manufacturing controls we could add, but for this one, this is pretty good. So this is ready to run. Um, I won't run this one live. The way that topology studies work is they run sort of a baseline FEA like we've done, and then um, it goes through another iteration where to the solver essentially takes an educated guess about elements that it can remove from the mesh. And then it runs another FEA study and it says, okay, well, then I correct my guess and remove these elements instead of these ones, you know, and it goes through sometimes hundreds of these iterations. So they can take a little while. Um, I do have one that's previously solved. So we'll just go ahead and switch to that. So you guys can see what the results look like here. So what you get out of a topology study is a plot that looks something like this. Wait for it to load the results. Awesome, here we go. So instead of having a red, bad, blue, good kind of scale, this is a yellow to purple scale. It's saying, hey, you need to keep the yellow areas. The purple areas, yeah, you could probably remove some of those. You can go in and, and edit these plots a little bit. And it comes with a nice little slider here where you can kind of explore the design space between these two extremes here. So this is about halfway through, right? It's just saying what areas you need to keep and what areas you don't have to keep. Um, it looks pretty ugly, right? Because we're dealing with tetrahedral meshes here. So uh, SOLIDWORKS includes a, uh, oops, I exited out of it, but I'll just go ahead and show you. It includes a, a mesh smoothing algorithm to kind of knock down some of those peaks on this and make a, a quote unquote um, sexier looking part, right? So obviously, if you were to give this to your machinist still with all these strange edges and, and bumps and things that your machinist would still probably kick you in the head. Um, but the benefit of these parts is they're really tuned, like I said earlier, to additive manufacturing. I could take this, this mesh right here that you see and I can export that directly to uh, an STL, send it straight to my desktop metal 3D printer, print it up, we're good to go. Unfortunately, that's not an option for a lot of people. The industry's moving that direction, but slower than we'd like it to. So there's other things you can do with these topology studies, even if you're still restricted to traditional manufacturing techniques. So I'm gonna use this topology study as what I call a stencil. So let me just go into my model tab here. And this is a, a new functionality as of a couple years ago in SOLIDWORKS, where you could turn on a simulation display. And essentially what this does is it takes any simulations that you've done and you can use that as a display state on your model, right? So I'm still in the model tab. I'm not even in sim anymore, right? I can do whatever I want to generically in SOLIDWORKS. It's just displaying with those simulation results. So now I can go through and like I said, use this as a stencil, right? We can select these faces and I can grab my, my familiar great underdefined SOLIDWORKS sketches here and just start kind of tracing out these pockets that simulation is saying I don't need anymore, right? So you can kind of go as detailed or as not as you want with these, right? And do exactly what we've done the whole time, extrude them out, cut them out, whatever you need to. Ultimately, so I was at this for a little while, um, longer than I'd like to admit, and I came up with a shape that looks uh, something like this. So maybe it's loading. Oh, I have to be out of the, the sketch. Now let's try. There we go. So I came up with something that looks like this, right? So using the topology study doesn't mean you have to go 3D print it, right? You can use it as a design guidance, uh, use it like a stencil like I have here to remove a bunch of the mass still. So that being said, um, I know I'm getting close to my time here, but I wanted to show you guys some fun stuff that I did with this part. So uh, before I get to that, actually, I forgot I had this in here. Um, we recently brought on the Altair product line um, for simulation. And uh, I've been playing around with it a little bit. I actually wrote a blog. This is a picture from my blog. Um, one of the complaints about topology studies, and as we saw, is it's really jagged and, and not very nice looking, as you can see on the bottom in this screenshot here. Uh, the Altair Inspire tool comes with a polynerbs wrapping feature. And essentially what that does is you can import an STL that's ugly like mine here, and it kind of wraps this organic 
um, NURB shapes around the STL until you get something that's uh, much more desirable looking like this. So if you guys are curious about that, feel free to hit us up. I'd be happy to point you to my blog or have a discussion about it. Um, it's really, really neat technology. Oh, I see you posted that, that blog there, Chris. Thank you. So I took the three uh, parts that we saw today, the original, the machined one that I just showed you, and the basically the exported mesh, and I 3D printed all of them. Um, what was interesting is the weights were still close, even though uh, the one in my simulation was metal. Um, anyway, so uh, I 3D printed them as solids. So the original was about 60 grams. And even with just using the stencil, and I, I probably could have got it even closer to the topology shape, but just using familiar pockets um, and just basic extrude cuts, I was able to reduce the mass by 50%, right? 60 down to 30. Now, you do get that extra level of um, awesome mass reduction if you are able to machine it or uh, to produce it with an additive technique, right? I was able to get that down to 20, which is about a two thirds reduction in mass, right? And keep in mind that this is all FEA based. So this is still strong enough to resist the load that I've applied given my constraints, right? So just a little wrap up here, a uh, comparison of what we did as far as optimization. So manual optimization is just that. You, you use your engineering design insight plots or just your, your, your intuition and you make some cuts and you check it and you do it again and you check it. So it can be kind of iterative, but you're still working with native CAD. Uh, same with the trend tracker, except it keeps track of those iterations for you. As I said, sometimes the next step um, isn't the best one and you have to back track a little bit. So trend tracker is useful for those. Um, topology optimization was the next one that I covered. So that is not a native CAD file that you get out of that. Though you can use it as a stencil to generate one, or if you have the ability, you can export it to do some uh, digital manufacturing. So I didn't have time in this uh, webinar to cover the optimization tool, but we have a bunch of awesome webinars that cover that in, in full depth. But essentially, this is a way to further automate kind of these processes here where we can say, hey, uh, yeah, I've made these pockets and everything now. How big can they be? And you can you can change dimensions and, and, and shapes and everything um, through a uh, through an optimization that's even more hands off than what we did with these two manual ones. So if you're curious about that, um, I'm happy to have a discussion about that as well. Um, that's also included in simulation professional. Uh, so some advantages and disadvantages to the two different directions that we took. So if you are able to do direct digital manufacturing, some advantages of that are um, you don't have to do anything with it. You just take that mesh file, you can take it straight to your printer, uh, bada bing, bada boom, and now you have a functional part, right? Uh, that's an optimal mass reduction there. And, um, you know, it's kind of just a quick, easy process. Now, disadvantages that are obviously 3D printing is expensive. It's not very fast. So if you need to make a lot of these, that's probably not the route you want to take, right? Um, also, it, it can take some post-processing, like I showed at the Altair tool, to make that shape look at least a little better. Uh, subtractive manufacturing, you know, the tried and true. Advantages, you know, you have native CAD geometry. If you put it in the field and there's a load case you're not expecting, um, you can always go back and, and change those native CAD features and be done with it. It's very hard to change a, an STL. So you can come back to it and make those changes. Uh, disadvantages, um, not as much mass is removed. And that's just a function of how much time do you have, right? Um, how much time do you have to sit there and make extruded cuts and on different planes and everything? Um, also, it's a little bit more manual than the other method. And it's not as much of a quote unquote cool factor with that. 